All right. Welcome back, football fans, Bears fans, Chiefs fans, really any fans. We are here today to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs defense. We are heading into a week three matchup that has the Chicago Bears going to Arrowhead Stadium to take on the Kansas City Chiefs as heavy underdogs. To prepare for this game, I went through the tape of the Chiefs' last game against the Jaguars, took a look at this nasty defense. I mean, these guys are flying around the field. My name is Quentin Crisco. You can find me on Twitter at BuckusStats, and you can find my writing at ontapsportsnet.com, and also you can find me podcasting for Bears on Tap and Shaving Points Podcast. Looking at the Chiefs' D-line, it starts and ends with Chris Jones. I mean, well, not ends, but it, it all starts with Chris Jones. He's a monster. He's one of the top probably three defensive tackles in the NFL, if not top two. Um, Aaron Donald is the only guy you can really put ahead of him definitively. And outside of him, I mean, they don't have a lot of a lot of star talent. Like George Karloftis, first-round pick last year, and Mike Dana has started to really develop into a nice player for them. But they're, they're just fine guys. You know, they're, or I shouldn't say they're fine but they're, they're guys, they're, they haven't proven to be dudes in the league yet. But one thing I really like about this D-line is they're just grown man strong. These guys are hard to run the football against. They're gap sound. They're big, strong people who are going to make life difficult for the Bears O-line this week. And um, really, because of Chris Jones, plus the general depth of this D-line and size, I think it's going to be tough for the Bears. And then you add in uh, Felix Anaduke Uzoma, who I think is starting to get more snaps as we're getting into the season. Could be tough. Then we get into the middle of the field. Very strong defensive linebacker. I mean, they have they have guys who are really kind of hybrid backers out there, too. Like, uh, between Nick Bolton, Willie Gay, uh, Leo Chanel, and Drew Tran- Tranquil, all four of those guys play a decent amount of snaps and all play different roles. So this is, this is a really strong linebacking core. Um, Spags has really kind of built this defense around these linebackers. And then uh, at safety, they have a, a solid safety group. Like Justin Reed, I like him better than what his rating is here. Uh, and Brian Cook, I don't know a lot about, but you can tell on the film, these guys fly around and are just out there to make plays. Now we'll take a look at the vertical aspect of the defense, the cornerback rooms against the wide receiver. Legereus Sneed, probably one of the more underrated cornerbacks in the NFL. And Trent McDuffie might be the most underrated cornerback in the NFL. He is becoming a heck of a player for this Kansas City defense. And really, all these guys, they're guys who they feel like they can they can trust in man coverage. They can trust to press at the line of scrimmage. They're big, long, fast corners who want to play physical ball. And against this Bears wide receiver group, I mean, I think Mooney, I, I've heard that they're hopeful that he'll be able to play, so hopefully he will be able to. But there's a... This is a really interesting matchup this week because I I really like this cornerback room. Um, They only run like five deep. I I didn't see a six corner on the roster unless I I missed something. Um, And against the Bears' top three receivers, it could could be a really interesting battle to watch throughout the day. We're starting this thing off with some blitz fronts. And this first one, we're seeing five guys coming at the quarterback. First down, three linemen. The guy in the edge is going to drop into his zone behind him. And these two linebackers right here are going to come in as well. The Chiefs have a nasty pass rush. I mean, they are really, they're blitz. That they manufacture a lot of pressure. They're really good at it. Steve Spagnuolo is known for the way that he gets after quarterbacks. They're going to be bluffing up front. They're going to be sending pressure. They're going to be doing all types of stuff. So next up on this one, we're gonna see him bring even a little bit more pressure. So what is that? Six guys they're bringing at the quarterback this time. Last time was five. And again, you're gonna see this defensive end right here. He is going to, this time he's gonna take a few steps in and then drop back to this zone. And really, we'll get to this a little bit later, but what does this mean on the outside? What does it mean with the backs? I mean, so this, that could have been a little clearer. So, I mean, you, you have man coverage. Man, essentially, you got linebacker manned up with the slot guy there. Kind of a linebacker. He's like a hybrid linebacker. Um, and then safety, 
right on this guy. So, and you, you essentially got one, maybe one guy over the top. Or he might even be, Spagnola has a tendency to do this. He'll take one of the safeties that's over the top, especially against a guy like Ridley. I think that's Ridley right there. And he'll just say, nope, forget this. You're just, we're doubling him. Um, so Spagnola gets really aggressive with his coverages, especially with these blitzes. Like it, it's really fun to watch and really interesting. Excuse me, that wasn't even a double. That was just a straight up because that guy was coming as well. I didn't catch him at first. Let's see, bring it back. Or no, yeah, I had that. I had him marked as coming at, coming at the quarterback. I don't know what I was thinking there. So yeah, so you had the safety one-on-one -on, -one on him. Create some really nice opportunities. Just play in space for the receivers in those moments as long as the quarterback can catch it. All right, this next one, we see a five-man pressure. They're showing five on the line of scrimmage. They're even threatening this cornerback over here, threatening this linebacker a little bit. But so, I mean, let's just do a numbers game. So if we, we assume that we have route there, route there, route there, route there. And then probably, yeah, it looks like tight end right here. If we assume he's on a route as well, so you're playing five on You're playing five on six, so really you're you're probably looking at cover one here, something like that. Cause if you have the if you have five receivers in the route, let's see what Jacksonville does on this one. Yes, they got five guys out on routes. Not quite. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, it's essentially man coverage. It comes down to man coverage right there. So, again, you're seeing just, so not not necessarily man. Yeah, okay, man coverage. All right, now we are looking at pass rush specifically. Not necessarily blitzes. I mean, it's, uh, these plays might be blitzes, I didn't even notice. Because all I noticed was number 95, Chris Jones, just destroyed. He's back. He just came back to the team for week two, signed that new contract. This guy is a game wrecker, and you need to be careful with him because he he can put an end to your game plan. Let's, let's watch him out of the three technique right here. He's so fast. He's so long. I mean, he's just he's got the hands just, ugh, just filthy. Just swats the hands out from in front of him right there. Like, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that, guys. It's Chris Jones is about as good as it gets at D tackle. Like Aaron Donald, Jeffrey Simmons, those might be the only guys I'd put up there with him, and he can destroy you. And not only can he destroy you from the inside, from the interior spot, he can destroy you from out here on the edge as well. They like to move him around the line, play him in different alignments. I mean, watch him here. He gets some bend. He gets around the corner, and he just takes care of business. You need to be careful, Chris Jones, all game long, especially with if Larry Borm is starting for the Bears. He is a a different kind of dude. Right here, so Spags is sending a s sending a pressure package here, and I'm not actually getting the semantics of the pressure package. I just want you to watch number 32 because Kansas City will do a fair amount of this. They're going to green dog. So as soon as 32 sees like. If basically him and 50 are playing a two-man game here where if the running back breaks out this way, 32's got him. But if the running back breaks out this way, 50's got him. And that leaves 32 to come in on the green dog and get after the passer. That's exactly what happens here. And he is quick through the hole it's it's really nice it's kind of a delayed blitz so once the pass protection thinks they're good he comes right through and just can can end the play so those green dogs are something to watch out for against spagnola first up here looking at coverages now we see enough of the blitzes you might see some blitzes in here with the coverages i was more looking at the back end of these but one thing that is really unique about spagnola is he's not afraid to leave his guys on islands, despite spread concepts here. I mean, 
we got an empty backfield. There's no running backs out here. There's nothing for no reason to stack the box. And he has no problem telling these guys, play up on line of scrimmage, play within a few yards of it, and trusting them, saying to just go to work. I mean, we are looking at a man coverage look here. I believe it's cover one. So you got just man coverage across the board here. I think one of the, one of these guys, I, th I think he's probably coming at the quarterback and he just got single high safety playing deep. Let's take a look to make sure I'm right about that. That's what my notes say we got, but it ain't always right. Oh no, okay, so we got the linebackers kind of double in there. Both linebackers actually. But still, on the outside, we are looking at man coverage. And, I mean, you're, they're backed up in the end zone here. You know, I mean, this is this is kind of a... You could give up a big play against single high like this. So, yeah, it looks like the linebackers are passing off anything inside the box to an extent. And they're almost playing a zone up the middle where, I mean... <laughs> this is the type of opportunities you can find on that type of man coverage. I mean... Trevor's got to get the ball out because the pass rush is right on him. So, so he's just getting it down to this guy because he saw they were playing off coverage or further off on this side than they were on here uh, on the this side of the formation. They were right up on the line of scrimmage. On this side, they were a few a few yards off. So you figured these guys are probably protecting a little more deep. Um, I mean, it looks like outside he's got him pretty locked up. And in the middle, they, they were passing stuff off here. And it, I mean, I guess they were trying to pass him off to the safety, but the safety's so far back. You, I mean, you got daylight all throughout here. Like that is huge opportunity. Um, I don't know what Trevor's reads are here. So, and it looks like honestly he made the right decision because if he's waiting, he might be sacked here. It might be done. But when you're facing this type of man coverage, you need to be aware of the opportunities that you can create or that that will present themselves because there's stuff open man like these cornerbacks are really good in man coverage but the possibilities are exciting even if they never actually show up like that's the dilemma right like because they're really good cornerbacks so it's like like if they just get beat but they don't get beat very often that's the that's the part that kind of hurts so on this one we're going to see like a, a cover three kind of robber look we're going to see the safety come down here Play, play, play a little hole down there. He's playing deep middle. And then deep third. Deep third. And these linebackers are just kind of spraying out. But Trevor ends up hitting, uh, I think it's Kirk here. It's not a, li a little hitch. But it's either the tight end or this wide receiver. One of these two is running a route right through here. And it's like... Spags is going to make you hit some big boy throws. If you want to beat Spags, he is going to make life hard on your quarterback. Um, and he's going to say, your guy better have a cannon. He better be able to do some, some crazy shit because to beat my defense, he's going to have to. And by crazy shit, I mean, I'll show it to you here. Like, And Trevor has the arm to do it. He was very content with taking these check downs here all game. But like, in order to beat this coverage really well. And I don't even think the receiver's running this route, but it was just like my thought as, as I was watching it. You're gonna want something like, like this and your quarterback's gonna have to throw a dime ball at the sideline. And the only reason it's open is because this route, number 39, is pulling the linebacker in. And this guy's, his hips are turned outwards He's gonna have a hard time turning around and breaking to that. So that's why that, I think, would be open. But that's that's a tough throw, man. I mean, you're throwing out to the sidelines on that. That is a big boy throw. And that's what it takes to beat Spags. Now I'll show you one of these here. So this one, Trevor hits a big boy throw. Like uh, up against cover three here. So we will go ahead and start the play up. We saw this safety come from up here. So coming down on a robber roll. I believe this guy's got outer third. Middle, middle half. Outer third. And we are going to see just a nice play. But I think it's Ridley right here. 
and it's just basically the safety's getting pulled back towards the middle by something no not even the safety was just able to able to run all the way out to there but it's really just trevor saying we got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside essentially because it's cover three it's a, again it's a go route you're really talking one-on-one -on -one. that safety cannot get downhill on the throw fast enough to be a factor and i've got calvin ridley against the cornerback i'm just going to trust it and he's repaid for his trust that's a big boy throw too like put it where his receiver could get it where his receiver could deceive some too like big boy throw another way to combat this this aggressive scheme i mean when i say there's opportunity like look at these big pockets of space you know i mean you are asking your guys to really be very sound and what their coverages are because that's just a lot of green grass for for guys to win and one of the ways you can combat that is with screens and i know bears fans are groaning at the thought of more screen passes but when when you're getting coverages like this like last week he played top bowls top bowls is a very different blitzer than steve spagnola like top bowls will bring heat at you but he's usually keeping more help on the back end and Spags is really trusting his back end players to to win and they win a lot so like they he has a right to trust them for do, to do that but one of the ways that you can beat this is say Christian Kirk probably faster than this guy I just need a block on the outside I just need my wide receiver to crush this block I, I can hit Kirk with the screen if he can get around it he can have daylight especially with number six retreating back hips pointing out this way you can put him in a bad position and you can get some yards now this is gonna be a game for chase claypool but like the, the wide receiver block is so key there right like because the wide receiver couldn't get any push on the block and the chief's corners they're not gonna let you just push them around they are tough sobs but if he can hit this block with some authority then he's setting a pick on this other player and all kirk has to do is make this guy miss and he's gone so that that's where there's opportunity with the screen passes against this defense that i'm seeing and jaguars probably tried them a little more than they should have here's another example of one i'll just let this roll through see number seven there he just never mind. i'm not just gonna let it roll through i gotta talk that one that's a like this is where chase claypool is gonna have to make some blocks this is where uh darnell mooney i'm not sure if he's gonna be healthy for the game or not but like you gotta hit that you gotta hit that because that like if he can get around the outside he's creating a tough angle on this player or he can create get behind him and create cutback lane so then he's just got to deal with this guy. But the Bears' ability for their receivers to block will matter, even if it's only a few times in the game, because those could, could be big plays. Now, here's a really good example of a cover three shot. So we, we're, we see cover three here, deep middle, even though I, th I think he ends up a little off, a little, little off to the right or to the side of the hashes there. Um, and cover three, and we got, we got Ridley here. And... All these four players are just kind of playing a middle, like trying to pass guys off. And Ridley is just running a route straight through the soft spot of these. Let me, let me draw that a little better. Straight through the soft spot. As he's got to get through the linebackers clean. But then he is running straight through big zones, like right in between some big zones that these guys are asked to cover. And again, this is an opportunity when you have, when you have a front that plays the way that Spagnola does to, to create not even create to take advantage of all the space they'll give you see how he just i got the route wrong but um so he actually runs a bit of a like up and then under so so he gets the safety flowing this way gets he gets these guys kind of flowing over and then crosses direction on them right slicing right through the zones See that nice little hitch, or not hitch, nice little cut there. Ball's a little underthrown. It's actually uh, Kirk, not Ridley, excuse me. And then 
the last thing I want to talk about within the coverages is red zone. In red zone, Chiefs love man coverage. You can see, I mean, the, the motion there just kind of told you, but that guy wasn't actually even covering him. That's another thing you got to watch out for with Spagnola. So typically, right, you'd say, okay, he's on him, man coverage, that easy, right? But that's not really what happens this play. So you see he passes him off there, and then he's just kind of playing a, a QB spy, maybe kind of waiting for if the running back's going to get passed off. But if you got a guy you trust can beat man coverage, like a uh, – like a Calvin Ridley, we're going to see him right here. Do you feel good about Calvin Ridley's ability to kind of create some separation and just get on over here? He he'll, he might be there because it's just straight man coverage. Um, you, might, you might have to deal with a double team or something along those lines against a guy like Ridley, but that's where having, having number twos like uh, Christian Kirk or Zay Jones can also help you. So let's see. Gets off the press, sells the block really nicely. And then his sell with the, let's see, why'd that safety creep up? Or that, that linebacker? Oh, the linebacker just didn't have a ton of depth. I mean, they were, he's a linebacker. He's not being asked to play deep. So you see, he just, he sells the block, man. Oh, I like that. I like that from Ridley. Okay. See how he's selling the block right there? Like it's a run play off the, off the play action. Run action, so like sells block, sells block, sells block. I'm gone. Adios, guy. Ball is a little out front of him. Can't get both feet in, but you get the point. Again, we're seeing man coverage here in the red zone. And again, we're going to see opportunity. Ooh. Hit the goal post. Uh-oh. That couldn't have felt good. So, I mean, I don't know if Christian Kirk's the guy I'm trying to throw a jump ball to. But that's where Trevor goes with it. I mean, he's got his man beat. But up here, he also has his man beat. So he's he he is open up there as long as one of these guys aren't dropping too hard. Too, too hard back this way. Really just this guy. I think he's the only one who can make that up. But he goes right here to, to Kirk. And Kirk comes right into the goal post. I don't think he got his feet down either, but so you had two opportunities against this man coverage in the red zone. I mean, like I said, these guys are good. Their pass rush can get after it and really put pressure on you too. Doink. Um, but there's opportunity to, to make those plays. And then last one here, this is really a Justin Fields note. Um, man coverage also is really nice for scramblers because See, he's, he decides to take off. Where's he facing? He's facing this way. He's chasing after his receiver. He's making sure he doesn't get burnt on that on that uh, that that out or the go route, the wheel route, whatever it is that was run. The one of these. Um, so he can't see Trevor Lawrence is running, right? This guy can. But he can't, I mean, he's not going to get him to like out here. These guys aren't going to, like, they're going to have to take some deep angles to get to Lawrence on that. He's the only guy that can really get contained there. And he's going to give an extra 10 yards here because he can't see. Like, you can't really blame him. He's at man coverage. He can't get beat on that. So, for Fields, that will be some opportunity there. Now, I'm going to touch on the run defense a little bit. I'm just going to point out who I want you to watch on these. 32. Guy's an animal, man. Like, he is just all over the field, especially against the run. He he plays lightning fast and just flies around out there. Even takes on blocks. Like, boom. Takes on two blocks or a block. Gets the tackle. It's very well done. Now, along similar lines to what I was saying about the, uh, about the scrambling ability, you can get some creative draw plays against them too, especially if you feel like they're going to be bringing heat. Like you can get the pass rushers coming up field, um, coming up field, and then boom, you're gone because they don't keep a lot of guys in that contain area, in that, um, the, like they'll keep linebackers there, 
in the short middle sometimes or a fair amount but like if you're running routes that are going to make them have to sink a little more you can create opportunity out of it and right here we see trevor lawrence we see the way the jags did it that they faked the the screen left the flat right and then lawrence took off i think something like that might be able to work for fields it feels kitschy it feels gimmicky but it can work against a defense like this all right this one i'm watching number 54 and number 56 run's gonna come right right, right here try try it right between the tackle and the tight end right there and they're just they're too strong they, they, they just play this beautifully and this is this is a really good run defense like this this d line feels kind of like it's like a no-name d line outside of chris jones but like and maybe Carl Loftus, like they took Felix and Duke Uzoma this past year, but they're strong, man. They have grown man strength and they will, like they're tough to run the football against. They are very gap sound and just a good defensive line. Like PFF doesn't say that that much. And like some of the other stats don't really bear that out, but these are tough SOBs, man. They're hard to run the football against. They're big, they're strong. They play grown man football and they will punch you right in the mouth. Now, this one, I want to kind of show you an opportunity for the run game because they're so aggressive. I mean, right, you got, you got one, two, three, four, five, six guys coming on in. Number 22 is probably going to flow with the run. And that really leaves like number six to fill in the hole here as the running back tries to come right through this lane. You're, you're going to see a defender flying in out here. And it's on the running back. Just hit the, hit the Jets. Beat that guy to the spot so you don't have to break the tackle. That's what happens here for the most part. I, th I think the guy gets his gets his leg a little bit. But, like, and you're really talking. You're just having to beat safeties. And you could be gone. Like, so there is opportunity there. It's just it's tough to get past that first level of this defense. They're really good. And then again. Just because I loved watching his tape. I want you to watch 32 here again. Dude's an animal. I just, it's like he knows exactly what's coming. Oh, and gets the nasty tackle. Love it. I don't remember. Oh, and this one's another one for Justin Fields. Like, I'm sure we will see a play like this. If they're in the red zone in this spot, Fields is faster than Lawrence, so maybe he can get the edge, but they're very ready for it. Like, again, look at 32, just out there making plays. Big fan of that guy. Again, my name is Quentin Crisco. You can follow me on Twitter at Buckus Stats. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Comment and let me know what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Um, if you like watching these Bears bears uh scouting reports for their opponents or if you'd rather see something else i'm open to suggestions open to whatever you guys want to see want to talk about want me to go figure out for you i am down to go learn things and try to explain them as best i can so let's do it let's make some great content i'm here to talk to you guys and make sure to go check out my articles game preview for this this Bears Chiefs game at ontapsportsnet.com. Also check out my podcast, Bears on Tap, part of the ONTAP Sportsnet Podcast Network, as well as the Shaving Points Podcast, where we are talking football all year long, talking gambling, giving you guys, giving you guys football picks, college football, NFL. Check it out. Adios.